Hello, and welcome to Law Talk. My name is John Celebrezzi, and I'm the co-founder of the Celebrezzi Zangi Community Legal Education Project, as we call it, CZ CLEP for short. Our organization provides continuing education about the judiciary and legislature to attorneys, judges, government officials, and the general public. As a career ed educator, I recognize early on how important legal matters are and, and how they impact our lives. I am the nephew of the late Anthony J. Celebrezzi, who was the popular five-term mayor of Cleveland and a member of President Kennedy's cabinets. As a tribute to his lifetime commitment to the legal process, we dedicate this show. John's guest today is attorney Richard J. Marco, Jr. Attorney Marco is a partner in the Medina Law Firm of Marco & Marco. He and his brother Ken continue the tradition of their father, Richard J. Marco, the founder and patriarch of that firm. Mr. Marco was admitted to the Ohio Bar in 1981. He is also admitted to practice before the United States Court of Appeals, Sixth Circuit, and the United States District Court of Ohio, Northern Division, and the U.S. Tax Court. He completed his preparatory education at Ohio Northern University and later earned his Juris Doctorate from the Cleveland Marshall College of Law. While attending law school, he served as Editor-in-Chief of the Law Review. Attorney Marco is the recipient of the American Jurisprudence Awards in Remedies and Evidence. He has also served as a referee in the Medina County Domestic Relations Court. His areas of practice include domestic relations, adoption, family law, along with tax and business litigation. Rick, welcome. And welcome to Law Talk. Thank you. We're going to talk about adoption today, and it's my understanding that this is a, an appropriate month to talk about adoption. Well, that would be correct. The month of November has been named as National Adoption Month. I see. Well, uh, when probably a good place to start uh, from a lawyer's perspective, Rick, how would you define the term adoption? Well, to back it up just a little bit, there is two types of custody that a parent has of a child. One is temporary custody, which means the day-to-day -day type of things where the sure. child is living with you when you're making decisions and you're controlling what they do, what school they go to, what friends they can have, that sort yeah. of thing, those decisions. The other type of custody is called permanent custody, and that is your rights as a parent. Um, oftentimes when you hear about a child being taken away from a parent, they're taking away temporary custody and placing that temporary custody somewhere else. Permanent custody is the actual termination with adoption is the actual termination of the biological parent's rights as a parent I and the see. replacement of those rights with somebody else. The, um, in severe cases where you have abused children, the Department of Job and Family Services becomes the actual parent or the one in permanent custody of the child. With adoption, it's a happier ending, sure. and that is the child actually acquires persons that are their permanent parents. I see. So actually, Rick, when uh, I, I, I was thinking about the show today, and it kind of harkened back to when I took wills in law school, but I th it sort of serves a purpose of, of maybe driving this home. When, when you adopt a child, I mean legally adopt a child, that child has all the same rights as if it was your biological child. Is that correct? Absolutely. Adopt. Uh, one of the meanings of adopt is to make your own and it literally becomes make your own and the child has all rights if you go into wills one of the areas right, you just mentioned right. and there is no will it passes to a spouse and children by certain percentages an adopted child is deemed to be your natural born children from for every purpose from the point in time the decree is issued by the probate court i see so if you were fortunate enough to have uh, uh, a child by by a birth child, a, a child that came the normal way, uh, and you then later on a parent, two people chose to adopt. So we have two children. We have siblings. At the time of inheritance, they would be treated exactly the same. Exactly the same for purposes of the statute. I see. That's interesting. So. Adoption truly is the real thing mm -hmm. in every sense of the word when you think about it. It's a permanent commitment and that's one of the reasons why it is so regulated by the government so that there is, um, you know, biological parents, you don't have to go through a process uh, to become a biological parent. You just have to have a child. Now, right. Adopted parent, somebody, the probate court is saying 
to the world, this person is an appropriate parent for that child. I see. So that's why there are many steps for them to go through. And frankly, in, in a situation where a child is being adopted, they've already had a significant trauma in their life that has brought them to that sure. stage. Sure. Uh, whether it's the death of a parent, the abuse of a parent, or simply that a parent feels they can't they can't parent the child, the child. so they make a solemn like decision which uh, you know you have to give a lot of respect to those parents sure, to allow someone else to raise their child those are traumatic events so you don't want the child to have to suffer more than one such event in their lifetime sure well rick uh, who may adopt i mean who, who could uh, who could adopt the child under um ohio law anyway the uh, a single person may adopt a married couple may adopt sure and in some cir circumstances, one part of a married couple may adopt. That would be where uh, it's a step-parent adoption, for example, where the child is already a right. member of the family. Or if the married couple has been apart for a significant period of time and really are no longer uh, married, then a single married person may adopt Same. under those circumstances. Well, okay, so you told us who can adopt, who may be adopted. Okay. Uh, eight pretty much everyone thinks that a child is the only uh, yeah. person that can be adopted and obviously a minor child can be adopted. Uh, adults can be adopted under certain circumstances and those circumstances are if the child, if the adult is mentally retarded or severely and permanently disabled, they can be adopted by someone and obviously the reason is that they can care, have sure. someone care for them. The other circumstance is when a parent-child relationship was established during the minority of that child that now became an adult then you can formalize that. The, bu the best examples are that are a step-parent adoption can occur after the age of majority. I see. And a foster parent can adopt a child after the age of majority. In both circumstances, those people have acted I as a parent for the child, so it's a matter of formalizing sure, their sure. relationship. That's interesting, and I, I think our viewers would be, be interested in that from the point of view. I think most of us uh, would think about, well, the only children that could be adopted are our children, as we would stereotype them maybe one to 18, but there are, there are exceptions there. The, yes. the situation uh, with, with um, uh, handicapped and challenged people, yes. that, that's, that's an excellent point. Okay, um, shifting gears, Rick, uh, I know there are several types of adoptions. Um, we'll start with, um, we don't have to do them all, but this one I think might be of great interest to our, our, um, our viewers. Uh, can you explain to our viewers what an adoption agency does? Well, uh, an adoption agency has a couple of roles. Uh, one is that it can uh, qualify a parent uh, to be an adoptive parent and, or a family to be an adoptive family through the uh, procedure of something that's called a home study. A home study is required for every adoption in order to assure that that single person or that couple are appropriate for the child. Okay, Rick, so, if I could interrupt you here, I mean, uh, uh, they, they, I guess there's several different types of adoptions. I yes. guess what I'm talking to you about is called agency adoption, hence it goes to an adoption agency. Yes. These are entities that are, are set up of a, of a private nature, regular businesses? Uh, they're similar to a business. They're, they're a entity that is formed uh, on the state level, but it's formed as a nonprofit. I see. It's a nonprofit uh, corporation. Yes. Right. And then it has to be licensed by, in this case, the Department of Job and Family Services to provide those services necessary for adoption. Some provide just adoption services, but some are also further licensed to be what is considered to be the temporary parent of a child. Oh. They actually take custody of the child. They actually have permanent custody of the child and then can match that child with an adoptive family, adoptive parents, uh, for purposes of adoption. So they, they are the child's sure, parents sure, sure. for a short period of Sounds time. Sounds like a lot of oversight, Rick, on the part of the, well, we're in Ohio, but I'm sure it holds true in other states as well, but the state of Ohio will regulate and license adoptions agency and monitor their, act, monitor their activities. They closely monitor their activities. They also accept complaints, investigate complaints, and um, do spot checks and audits where they appear in the agency's place of business to check files to make sure that they're doing everything the way that's supposed to be I done. It, what's more important than a child's life? Certainly, so certainly. you want to make sure that the people that are given the responsibility of assuring the best interests of the child are doing things in the right way. Um, 
and uh, there's an agency in Medina that I work with. It's called Building Blocks Adoption mm -hmm. Services, sure. and, and they perform some of these functions as well. So when you say the home study, uh, so hypothetically my wife and I go to a particular adoption agency, we express an interest in adopting a child, will member uh, uh, of the will the staff of the adoption agency literally come to my home and look at it well the staff won't but the social worker will okay uh, they they have different roles the social worker is licensed by the state to assess uh, the uh, viability of the family in a number of different areas. There will be criminal background checks, there will be home inspections to determine that uh, you don't have any unsafe conditions sure, in sure. your home. There will be criminal, um, criminal background checks. Uh, there will be a determination as to whether you've committed any acts of domestic violence and there will be the interviews to determine whether your views on discipline, punishment, sure. all those sort of things are appropriate for children. There's also a financial analysis. This is an extensive process. Usually it takes a good 90 days to I'm complete say, it. It, it, yeah. Three months to even get through this part of it or three months from start to finish? Well, it depends on how quickly the family does some of the outside things, such as you need letters of reference I see. and you need to go to get your criminal background check, all of those sort of things. Okay. And it's what I was referenced earlier when I said biological parents do not have to go through these background checks, but adoptive parents do have to. Well, falling into law talk, you know, where you're kind enough to be our visitor today, where we always talk about legal topics, Rick. Uh, in Ohio, adoption agencies have trained staffs of professionals, including attorneys, to ensure that all these things you just mentioned are, well, some, uh, all these things you mentioned are handled profitably. Can you give us, uh, at, speaking as an attorney yourself, what are some of the things you do as a lawyer when you're working through an adoption? Well, there are, uh, lawyers are actually authorized by the state of Ohio through its statutes uh, to perform adoptions as well. A, a, a private individual cannot on their own go to court and arrange for an adoption. That That oh. is not permitted. So I, I have two different functions. One is where I help an agency do the agency sure. adoption and the other is where I act as a private attorney to accomplish that. Uh, basically there is a process by which an adoptive family is matched to a child. Once that match occurs, whether it's from a private individual wanting to have their child adopted by a particular person or the government has a child it's called a state waiting child who, who has been matched to an adoptive family there's a process to go through the process is that the child has to be placed into the home of the adoptive family and then be subjected to supervision of somebody for a period of six months to make sure that there is a bonding process and that all of the interactions are appropriate so there is a, there's a placement hearing that occurs first in that period of time between the placement and the six months when the adoption hearing is to take place, there is also a consent determination. And the consent is, do we need the consent of the biological parents or has that consent already been had or excused? An excuse, for example, is if the Department of Job and Family Services has permanent custody of a child, the parental rights have already been terminated. terminated. Okay. So you need the consent of the agency and yeah. not of the parents. However, there are other situations where the parental rights haven't been uh, terminated yet, but consent isn't required, such as the parents have failed to have anything but de minimis contacts with the child over a period of a year, have failed to support that child for a a period of a year or more and in that situation the court can hold a hearing and determine their consent is not necessary okay so the you have the placement then you have a consent determination and then a social worker is to visit the child at seven days from placement then every 30 days thereafter in the home to make sure everything's going well and then the adoption hearing occurs at the end of that period of time what court Rick in Medina County do you go to uh, for that hearing? Which one has yeah. jurisdiction? That would be the probate court. Judge Lone in our county is the, the probate judge court in, has, yes. so for the purposes of our, so our viewers understand, the very same court that deals with, we, well actually we had your brother, Ken Mark,